Welcome to the Uncle Hack Podcast, where dudes pretty much just talk dude shit. Welcome to another episode of the Uncle Hack Podcast. May 13th, I am in Calgary, opening for Jason Ellis, the Sirius XM host. That's this Saturday. May 13th, you can get tickets to that at Jason Ellis's website. Uh, May 21st, back in Calgary with another Danger Room. What is the Danger Room? It is a safe space for dangerous ideas. Isn't that fun? Uh, myself, Brad, Brett Forte, and Sam Walker with one of the most dangerous shows. If you like uncensored comedy, all right, you head on down to the Danger Room. This is uh, this is our, our uh, where we bring out our new shit instead of our touring act um, or the act that we tour with, however you want to go about it. Exciting news in my world. Let's talk about me for a second because it is my name in the podcast. A uh, little pat on the back here. I uh, <clears throat> I submitted a album alongside uh, Brett Forte and Sam Walker well, I didn't submit it. We submitted it, and it got across the finish line, and we got some tracks on Sirius XM. And if you're interested in possibly checking out that album, you can hit it up at DangerCatShop.com. Uh, the Danger Room Volume 1. That, uh, we recorded our, our best of the best that we usually do at the Danger Room. And uh, you know what? It came out great. And we had a lot of fun doing it. So anyways, if, if you want to hear the bullshit that I have on Sirius XM on uh, JFL's channel. Ugh. Oh, that's gross. Sorry. Um, you head on over to DangerCatShop.com. Anyways, uh, let's get into the show. What do I got for you today? Uh, plenty of shit. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, there was a an assault at a liquor store in Vaughan, Ontario over somebody buying Bud Light. And then uh, a, a transgender male found not guilty in a YMCA locker room because he was too fat. <laughs> I'm not making this up. It's uh, it's on redo, uh, redux.info. You can check out the article there. But uh, first and foremost, you know... There's a lot of things that uh, are happening out there, you know? We're having a difficult time, uh, and even myself, right? Even myself. I'm trying to find the funny in everything. Listen, my bloodline ends here. I'm probably not having children in this lifetime, and it's not because, like, oh, it's too expensive to have kids and all that. It's just, like, I'm too selfish with my time. Everybody's like, I can't afford to have kids, and it's just, like, I just, like, I'm, like, fucking, I just don't want to deal with it, you know? And it has nothing to do with people having children. This is just me and my selfishness as an adult. I look at it and I, I think to myself like, uh, fuck, I don't know if I can do that. You know, there's just some things I look at and I'm like, I don't know if I can fucking take on that challenge right now. I, I, I fucking, I'd go bananas. I go ballistic. I couldn't even imagine like trying to juggle my lifestyle amongst also having children at this moment in time, you know? Uh, it just seems like a lot. And then on top of it, you're seeing, like, the curriculums come out. And then uh, just recently, uh, we talked about it previously on this podcast, about a teacher in British Columbia who came out <clears throat> and uh, was teaching kids about about uh, trans and, and bringing in drag queens and all that. She had to come out and write an apology. Like, sorry, I just realized. That's what I mean. Like, we're now in this place where somebody else is going to raise your kids, we're, we're, whether you like it or not. I don't think a lot of us are financially free enough that's, that you can just have a stay-at-home wife. Many of you do have them, and it's like, well, fuck, man, like, just go get a trade, right? And go live in the bush for fucking 30 days, make $89,000 in fucking 30 days, and then your wife can fucking sit at home while you're up in the bush, you know what I mean? I get that. Yes, there are ways to make it happen. But I'm just saying, like, at 
It's not like many of us are doing the whole homeschool route. You know, we all talk about it. We're all big talkers like, fuck, man, I'm going to grab myself about 14 acres and I'll just start my own hunter eight colony, right? And it's like, I hear that, but nobody puts the plan in action. We just love this doom and gloom horse shit that we just fucking sprinkle. We, we, nothing we love more is fear porn. And and now the fear porn is leaking into the everyday lives. And now we're all, our brains are melting because it's like, fuck, I should have bought that 17 acres 10 years ago when I said I was going to do it. Now it's too late. And we're stuck at this like this crossroad, the why in the road. And it's like, well, fuck, I could go this way or I could go that way, right? Or fucking, do I want the teacher teaching my kid, bringing in a drag queen, doing a fucking lip sync to Lady Gaga's greatest hits? Or do I want to go this way and let my wife teach him? And we all know, like, she's not the brightest, even though, like, I had to teach her how to read. And I, you know, it, things happened at a house party one time, knocked her up. Now I'm stuck with her and we just kind of make things happen, right? It's not like it's love. There's no love in the relationship, but it's like, she's there, I am there. We got kids and we're just kind of making it happen. She deals with my bullshit and then I fucking, you know, twice a month, I just get loaded and uh, destroy a certain room in the house. And uh, that just like even kills everything, you know? <laughs> and then we just like fantasize about the future and nothing really comes out of it. But it seems like it's just like, it's doom and gloom now a lot, a lot of doom and gloom. We love fear porn. We love being scared. We love being on the ropes and just playing defense all the time. And nobody goes on the offense, you know? And it, it, and I guess what I'm trying to say, like my offense maybe is just like not having children that's that's like my fuck you back is that's how I got you. It's like we're we're gonna turn your kid trans and it's like, well, you can't because I got no kids to turn trans. Gotcha, right? Which in turn, I guess like that lowers the population. so it in turn, maybe the elite get a little bit of what they want, but like uh, that's what I mean. It's a never-ending war, and we're always losing. So I'm just going to have a little fun with it, you know? Let's have a little fun with it. Let's let our hair down. Let's be a slut for a second, you know? Every day you wake up, you turn on the radio, what do you hear? Garbage. And then you fucking, you're like, okay, well, maybe I'll just float on over to Instagram. I'll hit the explore page and look at some knockers. And they always just, they, they slip one in there that they know is just going to set you off. And you got to start commenting. What the fuck is this? And meanwhile, you went there for enjoyment. And now you're fucking livid. You're livid. You went there because some fucking tattooed up big titty good looking in shape german broad they oh they're always they're always german that's one thing i i noticed they're always german every time i'm like look at this tatted up little vixen look at this look at this little sultron getting my fucking thang to stand up you know and, and i click and it's like germany and it's like of course you ought to be across the planet <laughs> of course why would you be in my backyard? <laughs> so then you get a daydream and it removes you for a second and you're like, oh yeah, what was I doing? And then you hit back. What do you do? You hit the back button and then you're right back in square one where you're like, what the fuck is this? What the hell is this? Why is this in my newsfeed? Why is this in my newsfeed? Why am I seeing an Oakville male teacher with giant prosthetic breasts Teaching the kids how to use a bandsaw. You know? Why is why why is that a thing? And then you get angry again. You get upset. You're mad. You're screaming at a steering wheel. Like a lunatic in the middle of fucking, you know, you you thought you were gonna have a good day. You know, today you were gonna treat yourself to a Big Mac, right? You didn't pack a lunch, you're like, today I'm getting a Big Mac. I'm doing that for myself. I'm gonna have a Big Mac, Biggie fries. I'm gonna I'm gonna supersize everything. Big pop. I'm gonna even get an apple pie. And who the fuck buys an apple pie from McDonald's? Nobody buys Mc fucking Donald's apple pies. But you're gonna do that today. You're gonna have a good day. And then what do you do? You doom scroll while you're trying to enjoy your Big Mac. And next thing you know, you're fucking yelling at the steering wheel. 
Big Mac sauce and little strips of lettuce are flying and hitting the windshield as you're going bananas. People are looking at you like, oh, Jesus. You know, as, as a mother is like holding your child closer, they, they pull them in and they're like, oh, my God, this is this is why we need more drugs in the world. You know, this is why we need more medications. That guy needs to go to therapy. It's always like that. And it's like, well, maybe maybe the world just needs to stop for a second. You know? Can we just relax for a second? Everything's a fucking white supremacist this, Nazi that, a tranny this, fucking gay that, you know? Can we just like, can, can us people in the middle have a second to fucking relax? I don't want to pick teams right now. In fact, what I want, this might be a little far-fetched, it might be a little outrageous, but let's say... Why don't we do this, okay? There seems to be an island that's uh, not inhabited with any people right now. You know, that guy's dead. He's gone. There's a temple in it and everything, okay? Let's Hunger Games it up. Let's have a little fun with this. Let's grab a few Proud Boys, a couple Neo-Nazis. We'll take a few TERFs. We'll take, we'll have like eight different gangs. Left wing, right wing, in the middle, Whatever you're into, we're going to plant them on that island. I'm sure there's more security cameras than you can count on that motherfucker. So we can live stream that and just see what's going on. Similar to what, uh, what's his nuts, uh, Sam Hyde is doing. I haven't watched any of this, but Nick McQuick was telling me he's just got like a room full of people that he keeps fucking with and they're voting them off and shit like that. I can't remember what the show's called, but Sam Hyde is a legend. But something along those lines, you know? Let's just take all sorts of groups of people, see what happens, you know, lawless country. How did, do they make it work or do they just kill one another off? Do they solve it? And then we'll use that as a study, a case study on whether or not we can move forward, right? If we can sit and talk things out or do we go full out war? And then we have our answer. And then we can start making judgments on where to go with this, you know, let's have fun with it. Let's have fun with it. I'm sure the rich would love that. Uh, the rich would love that. You know, you, 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 we'll, we'll hide weapons throughout the island, right? Guns, but the bullets won't be with the gun. So then you got to start figuring out who's got the bullets, who found the bullets and making trade deals happen. Listen, I'll give you a head of lettuce for one of them nine mils bullets over there. And we'll just... We'll see how the trade deals go down. See if these guys are diplomatic of any sort. I think it'd be interesting. I think it would be fun. Who is the superior class? You know, when you remove all identity politics and all that shit, when you got to, when you can just be like, hey, hey, oh, oh, out in the street, who's, who's taking the cake? Who's doing it? Let's have some fun with it, right? There's a lot of things that are happening out there that, uh, you know, we can sit back and we can laugh at. And one of those things, let's get into it right away. Maybe that's how we'll do the show from now on. We'll just have like a 10 minute fucking, let's see where my brain goes. But uh, this is fun. So, all right. The... the <laughs> This is on Twitter right now. Now, whether it's real or it's fake or somebody's troll or not, regardless, very funny. Uh, so this this is tweeted. Uh, it is a, a fuck Trudeau party Saturday, May 13th in uh, Oakville, Ontario in a Canadian tire parking lot. And this person tweeted this out. Uh, well, it was screenshotted. Leave the machine. Uh, tweeted this so I don't know if this is true or not but it's making its rounds right now there's only 48 views when this guy screenshotted it on uh, May uh, 8th at 11 17 p.m with one like and then this person BK Belton takes it see this is how this shit starts okay this could just be trolling this could be a joke you know and then we we just like love to fucking beat the war drum, sound the alarm, get everybody going, and then this actually turns into something. So then the, this guy that's opposing it is like, 
Canadian, fl- I'm going to go, I'm going to read the tweet. It's Canadian flag, hate rally update Canadian flag. I just spoke with customer service rep at Canadian Tire slash Oakville, who assured me this wasn't going to take place. Corporate is taking care of it, and it's not going to happen. Honk, honk, hooray. So meanwhile, this dude right here could have just been like fucking around and be like, this will be funny. You know, don't know what we're going to do is have a fuck Trudeau party in a Canadian tire parking lot, right? Because nothing says like fucking, hey, fuck Trudeau, like yelling into the fucking faces of people attending a strip mall. You know, nothing really rallies the troops like when I got my fucking... (laughs) I got my four doors open, Twisted Sisters Greatest Hits, outside of a Canadian tire, right in the middle of the parking lot that's like, you know, right beside it is a Dollarama and a few other like, you know, maybe there's like Sally's Nails or some shit. There's always like an obscure business in the middle of it, but usually there's always the same one. It's a Dollarama. You got like fucking uh, a Reitman's some sort of clothing store and our Deans is usually in there. And then you got like a Walmart on the opposite end of the parking lot. Right. And nothing screams like I've had enough. I'm tapped out. I'm ready to give up like hitting the parking lot with the fellas and throwing a fuck Trudeau party. Nothing more black ice lager than Hitting the parking lot with the fellas, you know, waving some Canadian flags. <laughs> what is going on out there? See, I like the trucker convoy, but it got everybody like, you know, you know, when you go to a really good party, when you go to like one of those ones that you're talking about forever, and then the one guy just can't, like, he's got to try and recreate it. He's just got to fucking recreate it. That one party, you know, there were so many magical moments. Maybe you've got laid. Maybe it was your first party, but it ended up just being the most epic one. One of those ones that just like the mood was right. Everybody was feeling it. No fighting. The food was amazing. You still talk about, oh, man, I don't know what fucking Greg put on them goddamn barbecue ribs, but my God, I still think about them, right? That's like, that's the trucker convoy for a lot of people right now. That's the peak. You know, you thought it was high school. You thought that high school was it. And then you were, you were a part of something bigger than yourself. And now you just can't get over the fact that it was like, that's the one time in Canadian history where the people came together. We rose up. We said, fuck you. We made shit happen. Right. We were against the establishment. We weren't compliant. We went against the grain. We were sl- we were just salmon swimming upstream. I wasn't there. I'm just putting myself. I'm I'm a big fan of it, right? I love people coming together and making, you know, regular folks making things happen, saying fuck you back to corporate Canada, to politicians, to anybody in legislative or federal politics or provincial politics, I should say, my bad. But this like this this Trucker convoy has now created the, the 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 folks that you know they thought they peaked in high school, and now now it's every other week we got a new convoy, we got something to rally against, we got to get out there, you know. And I'm all for it, but at the same time, like, what are we doing at a fucking Canadian Tire parking lot? What are we doing here? Don't you think like outside the mayor's office? And what is it for? Just a fuck Trudeau party? Is that what we're doing? We're bringing Duramaxes down to a parking lot with the flags hanging off the back and we're all getting together and we're going to compare flag. Oh, yours is a little ripped on the end there. <laughs> yeah, well, I got one in the mail. You see my shirt? And then we're just comparing like fuck Trudeau mar- merch together. Almost like it's like Pokemon nerds. This is like the equivalent of like the Mazda guys that go to parking lots and just like compare their cars to one another. But at least they're like, it seems on the same level and at least like the dudes comparing cars no like this is it this is it this is where i tap out we'll get together we'll do burnouts in a canadian tire parking lot actually there'll probably be a few burnouts at at the fuck trudeau party let's not count those boys out 
And I'm not dissing this. I just find it quite pathetic at this point. Like, come on, guys. Let's get it together here. Let's get it together. What are we doing at a Canadian tire parking lot? What are we doing here? What are we doing? Is this just a, a fucking hoorah? Like we're having a little hoorah sesh? I just needed to feel it. You know what this reminds me of is like, you, you remember when, I don't know if you guys are South Park fans, but when uh, Mr. Garrison is like out of politics and then he uh, goes on that vacation to fucking Florida and they're like, hey, you got, you want to rally? You want to rally again? <laughs> and then people, this, the, the, the funny thing is, is like somebody like went out of their way. They're like, I called corporate. Like, oh, you got me. You fucking hall monitor. Get the hell out of here. I don't know who's a bigger loser in this, this fucking... The, guy, the, the, the dudes that want to go and party in a parking lot or the loser that calls customer service to be like, well, there's a few guys. Yeah, they got an idea. They think they're coming down there and they're going to have a fuck Trudeau party. Are you about that? It's like, shut the fuck up. Losers. Losers. I'm sorry if somebody, like, I know that I sound cuckish right now. I do. But I, it's funny to me that this is, like, what it's become. You know, I want the punk rock rebellion spirit to come out, not just, like, fucking, you know. I, I a little bit of myself, am like, looking back on my youth, and I, I like the fuck you. I like to get in each other's faces a little bit, a little resistance, a little, you know, I like a little hoorah, but this just isn't my flavor. I, I like like the 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 trucker convoy. That right there was triple scoops, baby. This is just a sampler taste, and it's like uh, we're just trying to relive the past a little bit here. And this is like, you know, like like look at the it, nothing says like we're sticking it to the man when uh, y you know you got fucking a. A liquor store nearby, just in case, you know, we don't want to run out of booze, right? Why would you want to have it in a shop and somebody has to run into town? Why not just bring whatever we were going to do at the shop into town? Unlimited booze right there, as long as the funds don't run out. You know what I'm saying, brother? Unreal. <laughs> it makes it, it makes it hard sometimes, you know? And like, a, you know, I don't know how many times, you know, I got to hear that I'm some sort of fucking like extreme extremist, I guess, in a way, uh, an alt-right accelerationist. And I don't know where that comes from. You know, maybe it's because I was in the oil industry. I supported uh, oil and gas. Still do. It's not like I don't. But I don't even vote. <laughs> I don't go vote. I don't participate in the fucking popularity contest. Yet somehow I'm stuck like with this because I've fucking acted like a moron in blue color, blue coveralls. It makes no sense to me. I don't get this. And I know I'm ripping on this. I'm sure it's going to be fun, you know, because dudes that are going to show up to that, I, they are the funnest people to talk to. Oh, fuck, yeah, man. <laughs> you know, like, you're going to hear a lot of that. Oh, fuck, yeah. <laughs> Fucking right. You know, you're going to hear a few of those and then like, fuck, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck, yeah. <laughs> That's all you hear. That's like. <laughs> if you were to take that crowd and put them in a field, that'd be like their moo for a cow. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> you, just, you cage these animals and just throw a six or a fucking old Milwaukee in there. And when they start getting a little hungry or a little and starting to sober up, you just start hearing, oh, fuck. <laughs> and then the, that's when the zookeeper knows to come in and plant a 12er in there. Fuck yeah, bud take Canadians and put them down in the New York Zoo. <laughs> in the San Diego Zoo, there's a Canadian in there. Fuck. 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 Uh, 
โอ้ฟอร์กยาบอนโอ้ยาโอ้ยา all the Americans are like oh wow look at the Canadian look at the Canadian oh my is this a rural rural oh it is a rural whereabouts what part hmm, where did you find this one Well, we found him injured at a Canadian Tire parking lot after a funk you Trudeau party, and uh, we're just trying to rehabilitate it back to you know good strength, so we, that way we can send it back out to the wild of Canada again. You know, as you can see, it's getting rather comfortable in here. It's just like him sitting on a fucking stone, just crushing beers. Hey, playoffs are on your mind. If you fucking tell me the score. Oh wow! Oh wow! It's like when a uh, you know when you're watching the gorillas and they do something that you're like, oh wow, that's so human. Like the Americans are like, oh my, they're kind of like us. They like sports, just different kinds of sports. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! They like throw a what they would call a beanie. They throw a beanie. It's like oh nice took, but what the fuck's a took? What's a took? Fucking right. I uh, yeah, I found a. Uh, uh, I found much joy when I did see that. It's like a fuck Trudeau party in a goddamn Canadian Tire parking lot. You don't get like. Rural. I know Oakville. I don't believe Oakville is that rural, but it's like compared to the GTA that it, that that's like a rural area, I guess, in a way. Again, I don't know Ontario that well. I'm just assuming because we did perform there, and it just it seemed like a little smaller, if I'm correct. <laughs> but it would. That's that's just something that I can't. Fucking wrap my head around like it's like we're in high school again, you know. Like that's what I did in high school is we found a parking lot, parked our trucks, and then just like talked about the same shit we talked about the day before. Oh, you remember that fucking drunker convoy, man? Fuck, did we have a good time or what? Hey, eh? uh, let's have some more fun. Sk speaking of Ontario, Ontario's on fire for this episode, by the way. Uh, this one, Ryan Roca with Global News reporting a crime. Suspected Bud Light purchase likely led to altercation outside of Ontario liquor store. Police. Uh, this is fun. So now we're at the point where purchasing Bud Light will get your ass kicked. Let's listen in to what this nice officer. Um, as they exited the store. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Let's go back. We're gonna fire this up for everybody. We're gonna get this going. Self-produced, by the way. Let's go, Sergeant Clint Whitney, the York Regional Police. He's got something to say for us, eh? So this happened on Saturday, uh, May the sixth, at about 8:30 p.m. There was a man and a woman who had just exited a liquor store in the area of Jane Street and Major Mackenzie Drive West in the city of Vaughan. Um, as they exited the store, uh, there was a group of males in a vehicle. Uh, who had attended the area, and one of those suspects uh, approached the man and woman and started making some comments about the alcohol that had been purchased, um, <laughs> making comments about the, the appearance of the, the liquor containers, and uh, made some anti-gay slurs while doing so. Um, the woman stepped between the two males to intervene to try to prevent something from happening, and she was actually assaulted in the process of that. Two other males from the vehicle got involved, and altogether, three suspects um, assaulted the male and the female victims. Now, the, the guy was knocked down to the ground, and the woman uh, was assaulted to the point where she actually required medical attention at a hospital afterwards. So, a bystander's reported to have uh, intervened, and that caused the suspects to flee. They got into a black Nissan SUV with license plate CLHL 733 and made good their escape. The uh, 27-year-old female <laughs> victim was treated in hospital and released. And All right. I'm not laughing at the injuries here. I'm not laughing. 
Bud Light purchases have now gotten to the point where we're like, hey, what are you doing buying that, huh? You think you're slick? Uh-huh. You're going to weasel out of the store there? You think you're buying Bud Light? I called my mom the other day and she was, uh, it was her birthday, wished her a happy birthday. She's like, I'm just having a beer on the deck. And I said, mom, are you drinking a fucking Bud Light? If you are, hang up and never talk to me again. That's going to turn you into a woman. What are you doing? You want to be a fucking woman? What are you doing? That's going to, you're going to turn gay, mom. Don't you know that Bud Light is turning everything gay? (sighs) You know what it is, mom? I said, I don't know if you know this guy, but his name is Alex Jones, and he covered a fucking massive story that fertilizer is turning the frogs gay. And you want to know, you want to know how that happened? Is the fertilizer leaked into the water supply, turned the frogs gay. And you want to know where the Bud Light factory is? Probably nowhere near where that fertilizer that in the water that's turning the frogs gay. But it doesn't matter. Because Bud Light's turning us all gay. The can turned gay, now we're all gay. I said, you dump that beer out right now or I'll come through the phone and choke slam you through the table. And she says, what? The beer's turning me into a woman? I said, probably. Are you out of your mind sitting on the deck enjoying a Bud Light in the sun? It's turning you gay. The beer is turning you gay. You're going to be on your second divorce if you have another sip of that. And then next thing you know, you're going to be a bull dyke in prison. Do you want that for us? Do you want that for our family? I said, you know what? And I got, I hate to say it, but this was me. This is me. I was so angry. I flew back to Ontario and I was sitting out there in Vaughn and I, I seen this, this, this couple coming out and I says to them, you know what? Know what you're doing right now? You're about to turn trans. You, have a, you even think of cracking one of those cans and then the lady's like, maybe I already am. So this officer not only misgendered that woman, I squared up with a man that day and I laid him the fuck out. And that's why I'm going into female boxing. I'm tr- I, I, had, I stole the beer, I drank it, and that's why I'm going into female boxing. I, li- I lit that dude up. That chick that, ha- that took a sip immediately, I knew it was like, oh, you're a guy. What are you doing? You're going to fucking, you know, you're going to, you're going to go to the hospital? It's such a, such a woman thing to do to go to the hospital. Knock it off. We're men out here fighting. Unreal. That is hilarious. That uh, we're to the point now. We got some. We got some vagrants hanging out in parking lots. And if we see any Bud Light purchases, hey, 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 get over here. Got some words to exchange with you. I got some things to say. That's so. <laughs> that's where we're at now. <laughs> we're fucking. We're going Monday Night Raw in parking lots. What's up with the parking lots out in Ontario? What's going on out there? Why parking lots? Nobody can afford housing anymore, so we're all just hanging out in parking lots. The rent is so high in Ontario that we're just like, hey, if we just get a group of people together, you know, it doesn't make it look like we're all homeless. All right? We're having a good time. We got flags. Tell me a homeless guy that owns a flag. I've never seen a homeless guy own a flag. Have you? No, too busy just collecting things that are in the street. And you wouldn't just leave a flag lying around, would you? Hell no. Never do something. That's a crime in itself. Another crime is purchasing Bud Light, which was I was policing that parking lot that day. And I said, hey, 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 bring it on over here, boys. This guy's over here trying to say a couple bought that. Hmm, Are you sure? Are you sure about that? Unreal. So I had to light him up. I said, hey, you better drop that case of piss. That fucking, that isn't even angel piss. That's not even, it's what are you doing? You buying water? (laughs) You know? You're buying water? Thank you. You're over there. What are you going to do with all them waters? God almighty. I love it. I love 
seeing everybody just going bananas. I'm so happy to be alive in this time, you know? I want to I want to watch the world go fucking nuts. I want to see some crazy shit, you know? Even in Texas, what is it that that strip mall got shot up, right? And it's a Mexican guy with neo-Nazi tattoos, swastikas and SS tattoos on him. What's what the hell is going on? A Mexican with neo-Nazi what prison did he end up in, you know? Were there so little Mexicans that they, he was just like, listen, I have an uncle that's white, all right, boys? And I'm willing to go all in. What do you say? Can I be the first Spanish fella? <laughs> he, uh, he, like, did his own acronym for SS. It's like Spanish fucking services or some shit. SS. What's a Espanol? <laughs> My God, what I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I'm like flabbergasted at times when I see these things, these images. Right? They 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 throw it on the news and they're like, "This Mexican white supremacist," and it's like I never knew that those two things could go together. You know, I didn't think that I would ever live to see that day. This we have a. And here we have a Mexican white supremacist and it's like, it throws me into the blender and I, you read it, right? And you're like, that can't be true. And then they show the, the picture of uh, his tattoos and he's he's got the artwork. It's there, you know? You know that artwork that we used to draw on things because we thought it was funny after we first learned about World War II, right? As soon as you, you seen that controversial image of a swastika and you're like... <laughs> This will get some people going, won't it? And it was never like you were like, ah, we're not full bore into it. Every, every fucking like retarded kid drew swastikas on stuff because it was like, this will get, this will get the teacher out of control, won't it? Yeah. They're trying to teach us about history and we're like, <clears throat> we'll get them going. That, that should get, it had nothing to do with like white supremacy, right? White supremacy. It was just like, ah, I'll get a rise out of somebody with this one. It was a good gag, you know, the old, the old swastika on the fucking textbook. You remember that old gag? That was, I know it's not that, you know, here we go. Hot water. Nothing like dipping my toes into the hot tub. Here we go. But that was, uh, that was the, the, the age old gag when you were in high school. The old swastika in the textbook, right? You'd always sneak one in when there was like photos or like you'd try and slip it in there. It may be in a science textbook and you're like, hey, math and science, hey, you want to know who furthered science? <laughs> Jesus Christ. But like, like just listen to the, the, those those words together. A Mexican white supremacist. What kind of Uncle Tom shit is that? A Mexican white supremacist. How does that even work? How does that even work? You know, that takes some. It's like honestly, that that takes some. Hats off to the brainwash machine. You know what I mean? Hats off to that. How do they get that guy on board? I don't even know. Like, how do you convince that? How do you sit there and you convince, <laughs> you know, you're just like, hey, they were showing like black and white screenings of, uh, you know, uh, the fucking Hitler's Hot 25 at Reichstadt. He's just out there crushing it at Madison Square Garden, packed the Madison Square Garden with a good speech. And they're like, hey, do you know who else sold out Madison Square Garden? Fluffy, Fluffy and Hitler. And they're like, whoa, really? Is that, is that true? No way. And then this guy's all in on it. And then uh, like, then we go back to Canada. Let's go back to Canada and we'll... Uh, See what this guy has to say. I think a male, uh, twenty-six-year-old victim uh, did require medical attention. Now we believe that there was a crowd of people in the area at the time that this occurred, and uh, 
we would like to encourage anyone who hasn't yet spoken to police to contact us. So it's my understanding that at the initial stages of the, uh, the altercation between everybody, the uh, suspect made a comment about the, the male victim purchasing what he thought was Bud Light. Um, it turns out it was actually some different uh, alcohol that was purchased that had some bright colors on the can, I guess you could say. And, uh, you gotta be shitting me. You gotta be fucking shitting me. <laughs> my mistake. My mistake. I didn't have my contacts in that thing. I didn't have my contacts in. It looked like a case of Bud Light with a couple of bright colors on it, right? And I got astigmatism in my eye and uh, I'm a little colorblinded, you know, on the best of days. If the sun's shining, good luck. I ain't seeing shit without them contacts in. Sun was in my eyes. It looked like a case of Bud Light. Next thing you know, I suplex a lady through a car hood of a Honda Accord. Now I'm on the run. <laughs> what... Can you blame a guy? You know, I watched Kid Rock pump a fucking clip of uh, a a AR-15 bullets into a six flats of Bud Light. Next thing you know, I was charged up. I wanted to get in on the action. You know what I mean? I wanted him to tag me in. So I went down to the liquor store in Vaughan, Ontario. Next thing you know, fucking sun was in my eyes. They actually bought some local brewery. Uh, their, their brew of the month. Looked like a Bud Light case to me, so I had to go over there and address the situation. And uh, now here I am on the run. My apologies, you know, to the two victims that I left in a heap. Um, you know what? Daddy still got hands. We learned one thing that day. I still got some hands. I can still throw these things. And if you want to, as they say, fuck around and purchase some Bud Light, which I thought was Bud Light, I should add. Well, you're going to have to face the Reaper. They call me the Bud Light Reaper. The Rear Reaper. Yeah, and then uh, what the officer is leaving out of there uh, is I, I kiss them both while they are unconscious. No fucking insertion of any sort of organs into orifices. I would not do that. I did kiss him on the lips, though. So I don't know if that's sexual assault or just my trademark, but did I kiss the guy on the lips? It's up for debate. My God. What is it? What does this world come to? That's too great. And speaking of, uh, while we're on the topic, this one was, uh, this one fucking had me howling too. Um, and then we'll get into our favorite segment, uh, hate mail, but, uh, uh, this next one is a real doozy. Let's end it on that. That's uh, so redo uh, dot info, a feminist news and opinion site. This this will be fun. Don't worry. Don't worry. I know that right there. Some of you are contemplating turning this off. OK, pump the brakes. This one's a fun one. I always like to rile everybody up. I need to get everybody charged up. Don't worry. We're still going to have the fuck Trudeau fucking block party in a Canadian tire parking lot. We'll have some fun. We'll say some slurs like the good old days, you know, before everybody was so sensitive. And we'll, uh, we'll rein it in with a fun one, okay? Transgender male found not guilty of indecency in YMCA locker room case his past victim condemns verdict okay now uh <laughs> this I, <laughs> the old ace in the hole i like to call it okay this guy was sitting on a little ace in the hole the old uno reverse as we say in the biz a transgender male who's the subject of multiple complaints after reportedly exposing himself in the women's locker room of a. Uh, and, uh, of an uh, Ohio YMCA has been cleared of charges of public indecency, largely due to his weight. Now, a woman who says she was sexually assaulted by him is condemning the verdict. Darren Glines, who is obese, <laughs> was spotted naked on multiple occasions in the women's facilities last year, but narrowly avoided a conviction after his defense argued that his genitalia was obscured by the fat of his gut. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, forgive me, Your Honor, for I am fat. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on out there? You know what I'm saying, folks? We try. I'm trying to imagine that. Imagine, you know what? Imagine your defense lawyer being like, listen, I think I got a way out of this. <laughs> You're going to want to buckle up, okay? Lean into it. I know, I know. With all the fat phobia going on and everything like that, and everybody's, hey, you know, Lizzo this, Lizzo that. Let's use it to our advantage, okay? You, sir, are so fat that your dick was covered, okay? <laughs> Will the defendant please rise? Sir, when will the, de will the defendant please take the stand? He's getting examined by his own lawyer. Now, Darren, when was the last time you saw your penis? Well, if I'm being honest, probably not, in t not since the 10th grade when I was 17. That is when uh, my addiction to food and sugary products and uh, carb-loaded um, food really took over my diet. And now I sit before you an obese man. So I haven't seen my penis since 07. Okay, how old did they? 31. Okay, one year. Yeah, so 07 could check out on 17. I was getting pretty close. Uh, but I also did say, what, grade 10? So I'm a little off there. Maybe he failed a few grades. We're going with that. All right. Gym class held him back. I haven't seen my penis since 2007, Your Honor. So how could a woman in a female locker room see my penis when I myself haven't seen it in over 15 years? Checkmate. And the honor. <laughs> and the judge has to sit there and be like, you know what? He does kind of make a valid point. How can you be... How can you be uh, charged with a crime of indecent exposure when the exposure isn't even there? Clients 31 had been subject of several complaints for incidents that occurred at a YMCA in Xenia, Ohio, between November 2021 and November 2022. Oh, it's, it first came to public attention after a local pastor penned a blog post discussing the issues with gender self-identification at the YMCA. In his post, Mark Athertone... A Christian minister stated that he reached out to a YMCA president, Dale Brunner, and vice presidents, Joshua Sullenberger and David Thompson, and had, to had been told that gender self-identification was the policy. In other words, and these are my words, men with gender confusion who feel like a female will be able to enter and use restrooms, locker rooms, and showers alongside women and vice versa, Athertone wrote. I know a person who was told that if they are objected to being in these uh, facilities with someone of the opposite sex, they must use the special needs slash family facility. Well, I mean, like, if you were half in the bag, right? I'm looking at the photo of this uh, Darren Glines, right? He's got some saggy titties and his gut. It does hang past his genitalia, which is... Uh, <laughs> which is wonderful, I guess, in this circumstance that you were able to dodge... Uh, charge? Yeah, <laughs> like, how is this? What? What am I talking about? What, are, what the hell? How? Who? What? Where? When? Next up, at CTV, Channel 5 News. Glines was charged with three counts of indecent exposure in January of this year, but on April 28th, Glines was cleared by the Xenia Municipal Court, despite three women having testified to seeing a naked man in the common area of the women's locker room. In his ruling, Judge David McNamee determined the facts do not exist to supporting uh, support a finding of guilt on the basis that Glines' genitalia was not visible as a 
result of other portions of his body covering same. According to a trial witness, Glines, who weighs over 350 pounds, dude, these feminists are going in on him. Uh, Glines, who weighed over 350 pounds, was found not guilty because his gut covered his genitalia area. You know what? Let's uh, let's take a second here and just say that you know what? Maybe I'm on the on team fucking feminist right now. Dude, they are fucking roast writing right now. They're going in on this guy, and I'm here for it, you know? That's what we need. We need some more. This is the radical feminism that I support, you know, because it takes the brunt off of, like, men are trash for a second, and now they're just, like, totally switched their target to uh, these fucking, I don't know. I almost want to say, like, it's, like, deranged individuals that are just, like, they're, they're using this as, like, a crutch to finally see some tits or something. I don't know what it is. It, 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 and you know what? That 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 right there is a statement that who knows? Maybe I shouldn't have said, maybe I should say, who knows? Who cares? But fuck me. How, you know, maybe this is an invitation to those ladies that feel as if, you know what, you aren't safe in your own locker room. Come over to the men's. You know what? These dudes don't want to hang out in ours and fucking, and if you want to show it off, we'll look. But if not, you know what? We're fine. Just knowing the thought of knowing, you know, it's like, uh, you know, you know, when you're just sitting there and, uh, Remember when you were younger and you were told about female slumber parties and like uh, Hollywood really made it seem like when girls have sleepovers together, they're just like rubbing each other's tits and having pillow fights and skimpy little fucking uh, almost like those 90s, those like 90 lingerie type deals. And, and you think to yourself like, oh, yeah, that's going down. That's happening. And uh in reality, it it wasn't, but it was the thought, right? Just having the thought of knowing that there's a lady over in the corner possibly changing, and we're not trying to be perverts about it, you know? There's too many dudes in there, that, especially in a gym locker room. There's always going to be too many white knights that'll step in and be like, hey, leave her the fuck alone, all right? We're making sure that the trannies aren't in there fucking with the ladies, okay? And that would straighten shit out. So you would have like your own section in a men's locker room. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm saying it's a good thing, right? There would be dudes that are like, hey, don't you fuck this up, okay? Don't fuck this up. If they want to show, they'll show. If they don't want to show, they won't show. Relax. I catch any of you fucking around over there, I'll lay you the fuck out, right? And that would straighten that whole thing out. You just let the ladies change in the men's locker room in a specific area that's kind of like, as long as you, you get to see them like kind of walk by, you know? Because then like these dudes would have to go past all the other guys and like they aren't going to fucking, they aren't going to fucking just be sitting there doing the Buffalo Bill in front of everybody. No, 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 no. They're trying to get away from that. All that like, like that would, would, I guess is deemed toxic masculinity in some ways. You know, we, we use that as like the fucking out or uh, the way to criticize like male behavior. Oh, it's toxic masculinity. But then like toxic masculinity in the same sense is what's going to keep that out of like out of the men's locker room, which then in turn gives the ladies like a chance to just like, you know, you have to come through the men's locker room to get to the women's locker room. You know what I'm saying? I know this is a far-fetched idea and I'm really reaching and I'm trying to grasp onto something like trying to grab an apple that's just way out of reach, but it makes sense in my head and I don't know if it makes sense in yours, right? There's too many dudes that'd be jacked up and be like, listen, you know, if any of those fucking things come in here, I'll fucking, I'll suplex them. Just like Uncle Heck did to that guy that bought Bud Light that wasn't Bud Light in the parking lot of a Vaughn liquor store. <laughs> getting out of control i mean the guy is a slob you know you're fat when you like take up a whole sofa you know like a, like a just a, 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 a just a solo seat sofa and like your back fat is so in like deep that like you're you have to like sit like the penguin speaking for do the publica 
Katisha Young says the results were devastating for the victims and their families, but added that she wasn't surprised. Young had uh, Young had been called to act as a rebuttal witness on behalf of the prosecution, an employee of the YMCA in the nearby town of Fairborn. She had a disturbing personal experience with glinds that resulted in her having to get protective. Uh, having to get a protective order against him. I used to be more pro-trans rights on this particular issue, Young explains, noting that she had met Glines after he had begun visiting the Fairborn YMCA during their first conversation. Glines told her he was uh, transgender in effort to have her refer to him with she, her pronouns. Oh my God. But what was a friendly relationship quickly took a disturbing turn as Glines began to press Young for information on her masturbation habits, sex, and other intimate topics. When he started sharing his sexual fantasies, I tried really hard to tolerate it. I tried to be open to the idea that it was maybe just an aspect of transitioning, Young says. I had wanted to be sympathetic and compassionate. Ah, the old, the old switcheroo. Too fat to be a woman. That's such a shame, isn't it? Too fat to be a woman. You imagine being so fat that you're able to change in a female locker room and and the judge is like, yeah, you know what? You are too fat. There's no way anybody saw your genitalia. And, and the fact that a defense lawyer came up with that idea and was like, listen, I got an out on this. We'll get you, we'll get you clear of these charges. All right, you little tubby Tompkins. Hey. Eh? Your mud flap cover your exhaust pipe? (laughs) Perfect. The old mud flap cover in the exhaust pipe trick, eh? Pulled that old card out. The defense lawyer's like, listen, I know you guys are usually tubbies, right? You're a little fat. And uh, I used this one, actually, when I got hired over in Nebraska. There was one of you guys floating floating around in the women's locker room trying to shake your willy, but the willy was nowhere to be seen and the ladies were a little uncomfortable, but I came up with the idea that you're just such a slob, you can't quit eating, that nobody really truly knows what your gender is, right? You You just piss and it just runs wherever. You're like, how do they shit? How, honestly, like if if your if 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 your dick is covered while you're naked, right? You you got to dig through that, and I'm assuming that there's like more. So you got to like dig through gut, leg fat. Oh my god, I've never really taken that into consideration. And with that being said, guess what? it is time for hate mail, right? After all this hate that we just. We brought forth on the podcast, you know, I am out here telling you about all the crimes that I'm committing in parking lots. I'm out here, you know, secretly trying to be like, hey, that whole fuck Trudeau thing in the parking lot, it's gay, but I'm going to go. And I'm going to bring six flats of Bud Light so me and the boys can have a good time. But hate mail, you got hate mail, you send it to this show and this show only. The only show where we encourage you to be upset and write in, get it off your chest. You know, we don't need you mad and angry out in the streets. We need you mad and angry at this show. So you email me, UncleHack at DangerCats.tv. Send whatever it is on your brain, and we'll read it out here on this show because that's what we do. We get shit done around here. We solve the world's problems right there. You know, if you're fat, you haven't seen a woman naked in a while, and you're a little broke and can't head down to the strip club, just head to the YMC lo- uh, YMCA locker room. You can get off with uh, being f- too fat to not expose yourself, charge. Anyways, our first order of business here, our first order of hate mail for the show, okay? You know, we're getting caught up. We're doing three a week. Uh, we're getting caught up here. You know, people are sending it in. We got it. All right, our first piece of hate mail. I fucking hate Titty Tuesday. I became a patron... A uh, patron member or patron in my grade 12 year. Love the show. Don't love opening the app just for me. My classmates are possibly a teacher to see me looking at some greasy tits that only an Alberta dude would find hot. Also, I'm a straight girl. I don't want to see tits. Just want to listen to the show. Oh, interesting. Well, unfortunately, the Danger Kittens page has been taken away from the overlords at Meta. 
So you don't have to worry about Titty Tuesday no more. There's nothing to promote. So it hasn't been around for a while. You're just getting caught up around here, unfortunately. Well, back in the day, we did a little cross promo with strippers and prostitutes and anybody, any sex workers where we would uh, promo them and, and then we would do a Titty Tuesday on the Patreon. And, uh, oh, it's gone now. It's gone. That's life, folks. The The overlords didn't like us having too much fun, which is unfortunate, you know? We we're over here just trying to do the Lord's work, and apparently the Lord is uh, he's an asshole. Okay, our second piece of hate mail for the show. How are you now, hack daddy? Hope she's doing great. Love the pod. I don't got hate mail for you at the moment, but give me a second. Love what you're doing. I've got uh, the boys listening to you, so the word has been spread just as much as Trudy's carbon tax across Canada. What a twat. Anyways, I'm headed with my brother uh, brother, brother and buddy to see you April 21st in Seawood for your aptitude for spite to her. I think I read this one already, did I? No, I don't think so. Aptitude for spite to her. Going to be a great time. I've seen... Uh, I've been hoping you'd come here since I messaged you on Snap uh, time ago to come to Greasy, Ontario. Also, one last thing. I'll turn it into hate mail now. Where the fuck are your DC69 stickers, you twat? I've been waiting and checking and nothing come on. I want to support the show and brand, so get some stickers and new merch rolling so I can support it along with the boys. Get your head out of your ass. Love ya, buddy. Keep up the work. Cheers, beers, sincerely, tea night. Go ahead and mention me in the pod. I don't give a fuck. Cheers, buddy. Well, thank you for writing into the show as far as merch. We'll slowly uh, be rolling out some new stuff here in the next little while. So just uh, hang on to your fucking horses, pal, and we'll get to it. <laughs> Anyways, our final piece of hate mail is a good one. This hate mail segment should really be titled Love Mail, mail spelled M-A-L-E, rather than the former, <laughs> rather than the former. You sodomites can't resist revealing your true sexual tendencies. I recently went to one of your shows and was a little disgusted in the fact that Sam Walker has now embraced his love for pushing up stool. The only thing more gay than his act is a grown man who has a full sleeve of other men on his arm. Thankfully, you had the insight to imprint the other sleeve with Mexican cartel art. This gives the appearance that you are a bit of a badass and may just not be a full-blown turd-tamping sodomite. I was able to get past all the self-inflicting gay jokes and found the Danger Cats quite hilarious. I also enjoy it when you go on my friend Derek's live stream. You are really on top of your racism game. Thanks for signing my DAG flag and uh, and for coming down to my hometown of Coots in February of 2022. Keep up the good work. I look forward to seeing you guys again next time you're in here down in God's country. Long live Diagonal slash 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 the Plaid Army and Danger Cats wheelchair bear. There you have it, folks. There it is. Hate mail in the bag. If you got anything you need to get off your chest, email me, unclehack at dangercats.tv with the subject line hate mail so that way I can put it into the queue and we will read it off on here. That's right. Unclehack at dangercats.tv. And if you want to support the show, you want to support the show, is that what you want to do? Head on over to patreon.com slash dangercats69 or down in the description down below, you can get yourself an extra episode or the one you're listening to right now, 48 hours earlier than everybody else. Isn't that fun? Isn't that delightful that you can listen to this episode before everybody? All your friends that listen to this show, you know, the millions and millions of people that listen to this show, you could be talking about it before them, you know? It's like getting a little pre-screen to the movie. And it's a great way to keep me off the streets, smoking, <laughs> smoking heroin. I think that's how you do it, right? Anyways, good night, everybody.